Acts chapter 27. And was when what it yeah, and when it was determined that we should sail, notice the we, Luke. We should sail into Italy. They delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And with uh, Acts chapter 10, these men, these soldiers were dividing different bands. Cornelius was of the, um, I forget, but he was of a band. That's how they would put the troops. Now, this is dated 62 AD. Like I said, I don't know the dates. I'm not sure the dates. They could be right. They could be wrong. But with the dates like that, they say that Titus was written 62 AD. And 1 Timothy was written 62 AD. So, I mean, are these letters now amongst the church? This is when they say they're written. So we've got two more epistles. We already know Timothy has already been met by Paul. He's already doing the work in the ministry in different churches throughout the book of Acts. Paul would definitely by now, he's had what, two, two, or, three year, two or three years of, of doing nothing in Jerusalem in Caesarea. So this will be the time he starts writing. So he's written to Timothy. They delivered Paul and certain other prisoners. There are other prisoners with Paul on this ship. Unto one Julius, this is the guy in charge, a centurion of the Augustus band. And entering into a ship of Adoribdimium, we launched meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. We had purpose. One Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends and refresh himself. You know, here, here we're in. Go see some of your friends. Go talk to them. Uh, get change of clothes. Paul's a prisoner. So Julius would have some kind of relationship with Paul. I don't know if he's saved, but he allows Paul, a prisoner, you know, go amongst his friends. That's, that's much to say. And we had launched from thence. We sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the Sea of Sicilia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lysa. And there the Sertorian found a ship of Alexandria. That's interesting. Look where that ship's from. That ship's going to be broken up in pieces. Sailing into Italy, and we put us therein. So we got on this ship. And we had sailed slowly many days. Not much wind. There's no motorboats. It's all by sail. And scarce were come over against Sidious. The wind not suffering. When there's no wind. We sailed under Creek and over against Salome. And hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens. Nigh where unto was the city of Lacey. Lacey. Now, when much time was spent, a lot of time's gone by. Look at all the time wasted. And when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past. So there's a period of fasting. A note I got here was the fast was the tenth day of the seventh month. Leviticus 23, 27, 29. They have that note here. Then a fast is a purpose means of not eating and drinking it's not like you don't have the food the food's available but you're going to do it for the lord and this fast is so paul is still doing some of the law if this note is correct but there's a fast paul admonished them and said unto them sirs I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Not only the lading of the ship, what's in the ship, everything that's of the ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship, the captain. 
the one that owned the ship and the captain. Maybe they may be both the same, or maybe two men. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna sail. We gotta get our money. We gotta get this boat ain't making no money in port. We gotta get going. That's what it is. You don't see, you see that even happening today. Grave lives, grave danger. But we gotta get money. We're not doing nothing. We're not making nothing right now. Let's get going. More than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, this port therein is not able to bear them. For whatever reason, the ship cannot last in this port. They got to get out. And the weather is against them. They're fasting. There's all things against this ship moving. But we got to get going. Paul says, stay. The more part advised to depart thence also. Everyone's telling us to leave but Paul. If by any means they might attend into Phineas, Phineas, and there to winter. Okay, we can get out of this port and go to this other port. We'd be okay. But we can't stay here. Which is a haven of creek. You probably find it on the map. And lieth toward the southwest and northwest. So Luke is giving us directions. You want to find this on the map? That's where we're going. We're on the way to Italy. And we got some trouble. And when the south wind blew softly. Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Creek. All right, looks like looks like the weather's good. Let's go. Put the sails up. Let's go. But not long after there rose against it a tumultuous wind called a Eurocliton, almost like a, a hurricane, almost like a typhoon. This storm builds up in the Mediterranean Sea. And when the ship was caught, and could not bear up into the wind, we let her dry. So this wind is just working against the sails. So we're at the mercy of the storm in this boat. And nautical people and shipmen would understand more than what I know about this. I know a Coast Guard man and he loves this passage and he would understand everything what's going on here. But you can't do much in a, in a, in a storm of wind when you're a sailboat and that wind's just blowing everywhere and anywhere but where you want to go. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat. We had much work. Luke writing. Luke is on this boat working with the shipmen, working with the sailors, working with the people, probably the prisoners too. Everybody's working. This is not a vacation cruise ship cruise. They're in trouble. Which when they had taken up, they use helps, uh, pulleys, yard arms, anything they can get that would help them to make their job easier. Ropes. Ungirding the ship unhatching, unbolting, untying, ungirding the ship, and fearing least they should fall into quicksands. That would be, you know, just sandy kind of water. Strake sail, that's a nautical term, and so were driven at the mercy of the storm. And being exceedingly tossed with tempters, whoo, bouncing wave up and down, up and down, and Waves coming over the boat. It's a bad picture. The next day, they lighten the ship. They, <laughs> Lucas, they're throwing the cargo overboard. If it's grain, if it's gold, if it's rum, if it's whatever it is, it's going overboard. Because you know why? The water's coming in the ship. The ship is starting to sink. We got to do anything we can to keep this ship flowing. Throw it overboard. And during these sailing ships, this was a common thing that these storms, you know what? Man, we got this whole, like the whaling ships. We got all this whale oil. We got all this blubber. And you run into a storm, and by the time you made it back to port, you lost most of it, if not all of it, to save your life. It's a risky business. And the third day, notice how the third day keeps showing up in the Bible. 
We, Luke writing, we <laughs> cast out with our own hands to tackle. The, man, we're throwing rope. We're throwing uh, uh, sails over. We're throwing anything that, that holds this ship together. We're throwing it overboard. We've got a light in this ship and anything we can do. And they're probably saying, Luke, grab that, toss it. Luke, grab that, toss it. Anything like this, Luke? No, not that, Luke. Keep that, Luke. We'll keep that. But that, throw it over. Okay. You know what's somebody missing? Somebody's missing. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, pitch black. And no small temptest lay on us. We're in a wreck of a storm. There was no little temptest. It was major temptest. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Who's writing this? The writer of the Gospel of Luke that knew Jesus Christ, he said, you know what? We're goners. We're going to die. You may come in times of your life, you know what, the circumstance you're in, you may say, hey, you know what, this is it, we're done. Is it a sin? Luke says, hey, we're on this, we're done, we're gone. We are not ever going to get to land again. We're going to die in this, in this sea, Mediterranean Sea, dead. It's not talking about salvation, it's talking about our lives. Luke is thinking, I'm going to go see Jesus. I ain't going to see Romans. I'm going to see Jesus. This is how bad the storm is. And I remember lights. There was no light bulbs, flashlights. They used lanterns. They used candles. And I don't think in a storm like this, they would be using candles or lanterns. This thing's blowing all around. You don't want to have a shit fire. So when there's no sun, there's no moon, there's no stars, it is pitch dark on this ship. There are hatches. If a hatch would be open, somebody have a chance to fall in. They have a chance of falling overboard. The waves could drive you overboard. And I won't tell you about how they would use the bathrooms on some of these ships. But I tell you, it'd be over the bow. Maybe a couple of times you would go overboard the bow. The storm is bad. Luke says... We're gone. We're done. But after long absence, abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. I told you so. Paul, you got some nerve. You haven't done a thing for this storm. And you come out on the deck and say, you told you so. Does this, story, does this story remind you of another character in the Bible and story that matches it? Jonah? Wasn't there a massive storm? Jonah went down to the bottom of the ship. And I'm not saying Paul fell asleep, but where's, where's Paul been? And you could, when you look at Paul's life, haven't we gone to a point? Is Haven't we seen the reflection of Jesus Christ in Paul? He's innocent yet, but he's still on trial. The Jews are persecuting him wherever he goes. They're giving him a hard time wherever he goes. And here we are in a storm. Jesus was in a storm with the disciples. There's a storm and Jesus and Jonah were asleep. Did you did you get that one? They woke Jonah and said, come on, we will call on your God. What is your problem? Who are you? The disciples went to Jesus. Will you wake up and, and help us bail the water? And both those men calm the sea. One being thrown overboard and one the master of the sea. Paul steps out in the ship. Now the storm ain't going to be cleared because of it. But Paul steps up like, hey guys, where'd all the grain go? Where are all the ropes? What's going on? Luke, what it? He walks up, probably walked right up to the captain who he was talking to. I told you so. I told you so. It's been night and days, it said. And Paul steps out, long abstinence. Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete. And to have gained this harm and loss. Gain the harm. This ship is broken. The loss. We have no cargo. 
you probably, you know, the men are probably battered, bruised, bleeding. I don't know if there's any loss of lives. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. <laughs> Short ball. Right. Yeah. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. Now, I don't know if this point on there's no loss of life. I don't know if this entire storm, if no one lost their life. But right now, no one's going to die. Now, isn't that a comfort to Luke? Luke's saying, we're going, we're going. If Paul comes out, you should have listened to me, and we're not going to die. Isn't that words of Paul? Loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. We're going to lose the ship. This ship will be destroyed. For there stood by me this night. It's nighttime. The angel of God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose I am. Got that? Whom I serve. Does Paul serve angels? No, he don't. That's an identity to tell you. That angel of God, that angel of the Lord, you find the Old Testament. Remember what Paul preached from? What scripture did Paul use for the Jew? He used the Old Testament. So when he says that angel of God, we find out in Acts 27, the one that he served, that angel of God is Jesus Christ. You know where that angel first shows up? First shows up to Hagar. Whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not, Paul. I guess Paul had some fear. Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Paul, I am going to bring you to the ruler the king, the president, the whatever of what country you are listening to this in, I am going to bring you to the leader of the Roman Empire, the Roman nation. You're going to stand in face to face to Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. No one's going to lose their life, Paul. You're all going to be okay, but that boat ain't going to be okay. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. We've got to make a little pit stop, guys. There's a reason that we need to make a stop. But when the 14th night was come, two weeks. Two weeks. And what well, gets me, it says right here, it says the 14th night. And that note says the 10th day of the 7th. So that, that doesn't really match. That No. It'd be only four days. So we'll, we'll do what the Bible says. There was a fast. 14th day, seems to find where it was. The 14th night was come. And we were driven up and down in Adria. About midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Must be land. Can't tell, but we can see lights. Very, very faintly, we see lights. You know what lights would be to a sailor who's been out in the middle of the, uh, out in the middle of a sea or ocean when there's been no light? That's lighthouses, civilization. No other animal. Has lights. Could be another ship. For a shipman out in the middle of the sea, out in the middle of the ocean, if he sees light, he's coming close to something. He's coming close to civilization, whether it be a ship or land. People! And sounded. That's, and the sound is when they drop a line in the water. They're going to measure. And found it 20 fathoms. So what they did is they drop a, a, a weighted rope down the water. And the water marks where it was. They lift it up and by how many marks is it? Oh, okay. It's 20 fathoms. That's how deep it is. And when they have gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. 
We're getting closer and closer to land. The depth of the water is getting shallower and shallower. We're in trouble. Ground's coming real quick. And fearing least we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast they cast four anchors out of the stern and wish for the day. Drop those anchors. Oh, come on, please let it be day. Come on. Oh, my. Let's get. Oh, man. Oh, it's rock. We're getting. Oh. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, they're ready to abandon ship. When they had let down the boats into the sea, lifeboats. These guys knew more than the Titanic. There's lifeboats. Under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. To me, I, I could be wrong, but it looks like they're, the shipmen are trying to escape the ship without anybody knowing it. I think. Under color. And they're acting like, oh, we're going to put the anchors in the front of the ship, but really we're taking off. They're not dropping the anchors. They're dropping the, the lifeboats over. Don't tell anybody. We're leaving. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers. So see, there are prisoners. There are shipmen. There's a captain. There's Paul. There's the centurion, Julius. And there's also soldiers on this ship and probably people who are paid for passage. This ship, and we're going to be told later on how many people are on it. Except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Uh, there's a bunch of guys getting lifeboats right now. You better go over and tell them, say, you get in the ship or you're going to die. How's that for salvation? This is talking about their very life. This ain't talking about going to heaven or hell. They get in those lifeboats, they're going to be killed. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall. These guys are going to, and they come on, pshoo. With their knives, <laughs> dropping the lifeboats off into the water, and they're probably the shipmen, nice people. They are probably cussing them out. What the blankety blank did you just do that for? Paul told us to, for you not to do that. Paul, my. No one says the soldiers, not the seamen. The soldiers had to do it. It said the shipmen were about to take out of the ship, and the soldiers were to cut the ropes. Mm -hmm. And while the day was coming on, it's not quite morning yet, but it's getting there. Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continue fasting, having taken nothing. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're in the midst of this storm. They are working hard. They're trying to save the ship. They're trying to save themselves. They're throwing the cargo over, and they're weak because they've been fasting. Paul says, Stop. Let's end this fast. Let's get some food. Let's get some strength. Can we do this now? Wherefore I pray you take some meat, for this is our health. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. When he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. So now they're eating. And we were in all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. That's a lot of people. Paul says, I'm going to add this little footnote here to tell you we all get okay. And when they had eaten enough, it almost sounds like Jesus taking the bread and the two little fishies and breaking it and Everyone eating. There's no leftovers though. No leftovers. But Paul is blessing God with the food and they're eating. And they're full. Eating enough, they lighten the ship. <laughs> they're still throwing stuff overboard. And cast out the wheat into the sea. Now there goes the cargo. See, we were at 20 fathoms. Now we're at 15 fathoms. we got to raise this ship above the water line some more. Now the wheat goes into the drink, they would say. And when it was day, it's after 6, 6 a.m., 
They knew not the land. What is that place? But it's land. We don't know what it is. But they discovered a certain creek with a shore. Up a creek without a paddle? Would that be an interesting? Up a creek without a paddle. A shore into the which they, they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. See that creek? Let's put the bow towards that creek. When they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea. Let the sea drive them. And loose the rudder bands. That's what turns the ship, the rudder. And hoisted up the mainsail to the wind. And made towards shore. Imagine what this ship looks like. It's broken. It's battered. It's creaking. It's empty. And fall into a place where two seas met. This would be rough. This would be waves. It would be choppy. We had a place like that when I came in Connecticut. It was called the Race. It's just, it, it's nice and calm here. It's nice and calm here, but it is choppy. It is just strong currents. Two seas met. They ran the ship aground. That's not where the ship goes. And the forepart stuck fast. You ain't getting it out. And remain unmovable. See, not only is it stuck fast, but you ain't moving it. That's a double. You're in trouble. But the hinder part, the back of the part, was broken with the violence of the wave. Those two seas, man, when this ship crashed, it's breaking the ship in pieces now. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners. Why would they do that? Because any prisoners that get out of the ship and swim away... They would be free. They'd be on the run. At least any of them should swim out and escape. We don't want them to escape. And when they took down those bodies off the cross earlier than expected, because the, the, the feast day has come for the Jewish people, what did they do? They break their legs so they wouldn't run away or walk away. You see, a Roman prisoner did not have, you know, liberty. He didn't get too much a pardon. He didn't get paroled. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them for their, their purpose. They didn't kill the prisoners. And commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Anybody can swim? Go overboard. Go. And the rest that could not swim, some on boards and some on broken pieces. You need to see this thing? This is hilarious. There are people swimming. There are people floating on wood. They're floating on barrels. If it floats, they're on it. And we're never told how Paul gets across. We don't know if Paul swim or if he... And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. So, that's Paul's shipwreck. And had they listened to Paul? Now, I wonder if this was a re little reminder for Paul. Paul, did they listen to you? No, they didn't listen to me. Well, what happened? Man, there was this total loss. Paul, did you listen to me? Ooh. Oh, yeah, I didn't, didn't I, Lord? Mm hmm. Next time I tell you to do something, do it. Next time I tell you not to do something, don't do it. And interesting. 